So Andy, thanks for joining us today. Um, and the last time we were here, we were here to discuss the 600 S3 series, but here we now are looking at the 700 S3 signature models. Mm -hmm. So before we get into the details, I'd just like to know what, what's the essence of a signature model? Like why do you do these, these ranges on top of a range? Great point. I mean, signature is actually really important for us from a kind of an historic perspective. So um, you have to go back to the start of the business. The, the, the engineering team that was first hired by our founder, John Bowers, um, was fairly small, fairly close knit, based at our research and development facility in Stenning, the Stenning Research Establishment. And they all were, I was like that tribal in how they kind of worked together. They didn't really have like a great many different hierarchies. The only person that they all reported up to was the boss, John. And in late 1987, very sadly, he died. He contracted cancer and he died. And the team decided that what they were going to do was produce something that essentially commemorated him, almost served as a kind of tribute to him. Um, and that product uh, launched a few years later on, 1991, as the Silver Signature. Um, and essentially what it did was bring together at that point in time a lot of the thinking that we'd had collectively about how loudspeakers could work. So it was a beautifully constructed, very exotic, compact two-way loudspeaker that had a kind of few key themes that run through it, like distinct technologies that you wouldn't find in other products, distinct finish that you wouldn't find in other products, fundamental precepts like tweeter on top and so on. So that, if you like, set a bar. Uh, the name, by the way, was originally evoking the idea that John Bowers' signature was on mm. the front of the product, and that stems from the very early days. If you first bought a Bowers and Wilkins speaker back in the 60s, they all came with a, a pen calibration certificate that showed the performance, and all of those certificates were signed by John Bowers. So it was kind of like evoking that idea. So since then, we've done it, well, this is now the eighth iteration, the eighth generation of Signature. So they aren't common, mm. um, but each one kind of follows the same themes, if you like, which is taking an existing range of loudspeakers, which in its own right is already quite well regarded, and then pushing the envelope, seeing what you can do if you take the principles that propel that first speaker, and if you like, turning them all up to 11. Okay. Uh, and having reviewed a 700 S3 model myself, a mm -hmm. very good speaker, wh why do we need a signature model? Well, it's kind of that, really. Partially, it is genuinely just to sort of see what can be done. Um, we don't do it with every single model. You probably are aware, but the 700 series is quite extensive. There are, there are six stereo pair models and, and two centre channels. In the signature series, we only do it with the two stereo models that you can see here and, and a centre speaker. So there's only three of that eight. Um, and the idea is essentially the two, if you like, flagships. So the premium or the largest, most high performance stand mount, uh, which is the 705, and the same again with the, with the floor stand of the 702. And as I say, in this particular case, we've also got a centre speaker. So it's partially that, it's partially to, um, I guess, provide a bit of cheer, something a bit exotic. And let's be honest, we could all do with that at the moment. Um, and the other thing that's really relevant is where our 800 series has gone. If you look at our 800 series, which is our flagship range, um, partially because of technologies, partially because of you know what's involved in pricing these days, that's kind of moved up. So we wanted to have something that essentially bridged the gap. Mm. So you know the top end of these two gives you a lot of the really exotic flavour that you get from an 800 series, but in something that's significant and more affordable. Okay, and let's get into that flavour. So what what are the fundamental differences between this and the standard 700 S3 models that? These build upon. So you always approach it, I mean, let's, we'll come to the finished part later on perhaps, let's talk about the engineering point of view first and foremost. You, you approach it from acoustic, uh, mechanical and electrical perspective. So acoustic is about forms and structures. So this generation of 700 series was kind of pretty well sorted already from the point of view of, of openness and transparency by virtue of having this pod design which kind of places the drive unit sort of slightly forward at the front mm. of the cabinet, which really helps the kind of cabinet drifaction effect. So that was good anyway. In the course of generating the last 800 series uh, signature products, we came across a new um, pattern of grill mesh for the tweeter for the high frequency, which worked incredibly well. It, it seems like a small thing, but actually when you think about the role that a grill plays and how it potentially could do things quite bad to the, you know, to the performance of the high frequency by just obstructing it, um, having a new form, having a new shape, uh, which is FAA optimized, of course, uh, is hugely important. So this has got, um, 800 series signature tweeter grill mesh and tube loading inside it. Um, it's got terminals on the back which are fundamentally derived from the 800 series signature as well. So they use a much higher grade of brass um, in terms of the, the collar, the pole and so forth, um, which is 
lowering lead content higher in conductivity and that improves the flow of the signal into the speaker. Um, the motor systems, so the drive units, have new um, suspensions, so both on the base units on the 702 and the mid-base on the 705, uh, which has a revised resin content, um, really improves the dynamics. Uh, basically, it makes it much quicker in response and gives it more perceptibly increased levels of bass and accuracy. And then the other thing, I guess, it's, you know, as you always expect with any signature product, is a lot of work on the crossover. So, um, significantly more um, exotic Mundorf capacitors inside both products, uh, revised bypass capacitors in both products. In this one, uh, really significant change to the inductors. They're much, much larger on the low frequency. They're largely related to what you find in an 800 series. So, um, in both cases, as I say, the electrical circuits improved, the acoustic forms improved. Uh, mechanically they're behaving better, they're doing all the right things. And, and it's interesting to hear that those improvements start right from where the signal enters the speaker, mm. right at the terminals. Obviously that's inside, you can't escape how good these look from the outside. I love the, the gold detail and I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up but that's exquisite and the finishes themselves. I wonder if you just want to tell us about those. Yeah, I mean again, when you, you know, we, we do mainstream finishes which you like to think are a pretty high standard, right, which partially sets the bar for how high these have to go, you know, I mean, you know, none of the mainstream product I think looks plain, but um, there's a, a kind of rope that goes right back to the start of, of all signature products that they're exotic. So we have one which is a more uh, wood related finish. Just to be really clear, this is an engineered wood. It comes from an Italian company called Alpi. We've worked with them for years, the original silver signatures had it and all subsequent ones do as well. So engineered wood means not a vinyl, it is genuinely wood, but you're not gonna get this extreme figuring and all this other stuff without you know, being irresponsible to the rainforest and clearly we're not about to do that. So this is an engineered wood called Datuk. It's related to ebony in its look and feel, but no trees were harmed in the making of it in, in that sense. Everything, every wood that was in it is sustainably sourced and then it's dyed to create that finish. Uh, and then it has nine coats of, of lacquer over the top after being called smooth in the first place. So it gives it that real depth and that hit. This is um, a metal flake or a metallic paint. Um, it's called Midnight Blue Metallic. Uh, we used it originally and still do on obviously the Nautilus, which mm. is a really iconic loudspeaker. Uh, you also get it on, on the 800 series signature product as well. And as you can see, it's... It's nice. I mean, th there's a deliberate attempt, as you can probably imagine, between the two to try and provide almost like polar opposites. You know, some people are more into painted cabinets. Great. Some people are more into wood cabinets. Great. You can't get a signature in any other colour than these, though. We don't offer the mainstream colours. Signature products are signature products. So it's one or the other. OK. Uh, and I can see that resembles some of the, the colour schemes that are in the PX8 and some of your headphones as well, with the yes. blue and gold working together, which is... A really nice touch. Um, are there any plans to add any of these enhancements that you've brought to the signature model to the standard 700 S3s? No, we won't be rolling it back, and that's also a thing that's interesting with signature. You can almost treat it in that sense as like pre-development work for the next generation. So the premise is that uh, when a new range comes out after a couple of years, if there's scope to do it, we'll look at something around the signature series and try and introduce that. But then you could probably expect what's coming here to roll into the next generation of 700 series down the line. And I'm not going to put a timeline on that, but as you can imagine, that, that probably will come eventually. Um, and the same would apply for the 800 series. So it's not about going back, it's about trying to signpost the future. So is this as far as you can take a 700 S3 model? An S3 model? Um, probably, for now, yeah. I mean, realistically, I think the, you know, the, the, they're a very highly developed loudspeaker, as you know from when we did the you know, presentations a couple of years back on, on the then new S3. Um, the state of change between that and the S2 was quite substantial, introducing the, the subtle curve in the front of the cabinet, the pods, which obviously bring the drive unit forward and kind of help the cabinet diffraction, the new tweeter form and so forth. All of those things have done a good job acoustically and mechanically to the structure. In the case of a 702, having that substantial downward firing port is a really big state of change. It means although it's quite a large loudspeaker, it's quite svelte in its frontal aspect. If you look at it, it fits into your room quite well. And because of the port output, it's actually surprisingly tolerant about where it goes, mm. which is which is a good thing. So I think no, I mean from, from where we are now, probably the next iteration will be something significant or different in in cabinet forms. But um, again, I'm not going to put a time frame on that. Um, driving it wise, I mean as you are sure aware, you know the continuum cone which is in this product is is as highly developed as we have in mid range cone technology. In the case of this model right here, the 702, I mean the the entire assembly, the cone. 
the chassis that houses it, the suspension system behind it, the decoupling rod, the magnets, all of it are literally straight out of an 802. They're out of, you know, approaching our flagship loudspeaker. It's as high performance as it gets in a product at this price point. So right now, no, but down the line, who knows? Okay, um, and what would you say to an existing uh, 700S3 owner if they were considering an upgrade, either looking to the 800 series or perhaps one of these? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what differences do you think they'd notice that a worthwhile upgrade for them to make? Well, that's what we hope. I mean, that's always the idea, right? I mean, the, the way that we've always done demonstrations, and obviously you've experienced it in the past as well, is, is this notional thing that we like to say, listen, you'll see. So we encourage people to try it, you know, do an A-B comparison. We, we don't shy away from that. I think what we've chased in the case of both models, and also the center channel, by the way, uh, is increase in, in resolution, uh, improvement in spatial retrieval. I think this particularly helps that sense of kind of space. Um, the revisions to the low frequency and the crossovers particularly help with, with dynamics. Um, so they do sound at the same time bigger and also more accurate in the low frequency. It doesn't mean for one moment to say that the current speaker that you've got is broken. I mean, we'd like to think we don't make bad loudspeakers, so hopefully the one that you already have is, is, is good and you're happy with it. Um, but at the same time, if you haven't yet made, taken that plunge, then you're thinking about a 705, for example, I would say audition both um, because you might be surprised. The other key point that's, I think, really important with 700 series is it's, I guess, less challenging to live with, less challenging to sort of fit into your home, less demanding on the electronics that are downstream of it. This is a domestic speaker, first and foremost, whereas the 800 series occupies that slightly unusual territory mm. of being both a domestic speaker and a professional speaker, because, of course, it's used in recording studios. You know, these aren't. These are used for your home. Um, and it's size for your home, it's designed to be used with electronics that I guess are somewhat more, less exotic, pardon me. So it's a, it's an easier device to live with, you know, from a 5.1 system combination point of view, if that's what you wanted to do from a home theatre perspective, you know, it will work off a good quality AVR. From a stereo perspective, you know, a decent integrated amplifier will, will be fine. The good thing about these is, again, if your enthusiasm and your passion for the hobby grows, and you scale the rest of your system, you know, and add a bigger amp or something like that, they've got more than enough headroom to grow with you. Um, and can we just talk about the prices? Could you just remind me of what each model costs? Sure, so this is um, the 705 Series 3 Signature. It is £3,400 in either finish. Uh, we don't offer a dedicated stand that's differentiated from the regular stand. That's the standard 700 Series stand, the FS700 Series 3. Uh, mainly because we think it's quite nice anyway, and it works very well mechanically, and it's been designed to go with a speaker. So. You have your choice of the stand, but you don't have to have it. You're not obliged. That's the product by itself. For context, that's eight hundred pounds more than a standard seven hundred five. So a standard seven hundred five is two thousand six hundred. This is three thousand four hundred. Uh, this is a seven hundred two, um, and this is seven thousand uh, pounds. The standard model is six thousand uh, pounds, and then the centre channel is uh, two thousand two hundred pounds, and the standard model is sixteen hundred. So there is a there's an uplift in all cases, but I think. I would hope that if you went through the whole list of things that have been changed, uh, and then obviously you also look at the finishes as well, that collectively it adds up to a reasonable outlay. And I noticed earlier when we talked about this being, is this as far as you can take this series? Mm -hmm. You said uh, quite subtly for now, because mm -hmm. I also know that, you know, how Bowers and Wilkins work, while we're sat here having this conversation, back at the factory, you're working on future models, constantly mm -hmm. uh, innovating, constantly looking at new technology and what you can bring to the table later on. Mm -hmm. uh, what's next for Bowers? I'm not going to give you specifics, but okay. I think the important point about it, and here's my, here's my, my analogy, um, you're only as good as the lens that you look through. So the world that we can see and understand today will undoubtedly continue to evolve because we can see and understand more about it because our measurement technologies and our ability to deal with that get better and better. So we have a constantly operating research team. So development teams responsible for delivering a product to market, research team is not connected with that timeline. Research team takes as long as it takes. I mean, a really good example is the continuum cone. I mean, that was seven years and 70 plus iterations. And our head of research said after the 70 iterations, he stopped counting. But it doesn't matter if you get there in the end. Uh, the, the biomimetic suspension, the suspension system that's behind the continuum cone, same again. So there's lots of stuff happening in the background that's just constant. Mm. And then at certain points, the product team uh, and obviously the work on, on development will say, but I mean, it's the important point to understand is it's not pegged or fixed to a timeline. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a, there's a desire, of course there's a desire. The business has a desire, an aspiration to try and do new things because inevitably when you bring in a new product, you always see that kind of surge or that increase in demand which follows by a slow and steady tail. 
So naturally, every so often, there's always a requirement to come up with something new. But at the same time, we're not in the business of just changing things for the sake of it. So when we come up with something new, ideally, there's always meaningful technologies and changes behind it that propel it. Um, and that'll be the same again when we come to the next generation of 800 series. I'm, of course, we're working on the next generation mm. of 800 series. Just don't ask me to tell you when it's coming out. Final question. Who's this uh, or these speakers aimed at? Good question. Um, 700 series in general sells into a much broader audience than 800 series. 800 series is very much for the music lover, the no holds barred music lover. I mean, we do make a sense to speak within that range. These days, increasingly, 800 series is about stereo. Um, 700 series, by contrast, sells to a mix. So in some cases, it's somebody looking for a really nice, high fi and a compact form factor. 705 is a perfect example. In some cases, it's people looking to try and fit out almost like a family room space, you know, a media environment where, in some cases, they're listening to music, but equally, they're watching a film mm. or, you know, the big match or whatever it is, which is why we have a significantly higher, what we call, attachment rate of centre speakers to the 702 and the 703 than we do with some of our other ranges. A lot of these get sold not just for stereo context, but also for, for 5.1 context. Um, so it basically... People who value nice things, obviously, who are prepared to spend a bit, I'm not gonna lie, they're not free, um, but at the same time, people who also want something that fits into their house and doesn't take it over, and hopefully provides a kind of elegant sort of center point when it's not in operation. Because obviously the whole point of a loudspeaker like this is when it is in operation, you aren't really aware of it. You're mm. listening to what you want to listen to. Annika, Bowser Wilkins, thank you very much. Pleasure.